Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to talk to you about the Yangju Highway incident, or also known as the Highway 56 accident. The Yangju Highway incident occurred on June 13th, 2002. The U.S. military was driving a vehicle called the AVLB. It was a armored vehicle that carried a mobile bridge. It was on a training exercise, and unfortunately, they accidentally and unintentionally ran over the uh, two South Korean middle school girls. Thoughts and prayers still go out to them and their families, um, and their names were Shin Hyo Soon and Shim Mi Sun. God bless you guys. God bless you ladies. You were taken way too early, and I, I'm sorry. My heart goes out to you. Um, however, the U.S. military did not intentionally run over those two girls. Um, there is some talk that they did, but I did a lot of research on this subject, and they did not intentionally run over those girls. They, it was miscommunication between the driver and an accident, and I've done lots of research, and let me go through all the points. Okay, point one, I do not... The Gyeonggi province assumed responsibility for this. Now, I, I don't hate the Gyeonggi province. That's what I wanted to say first. I don't hate the Gyeonggi province, okay, of South Korea. Their roads were very narrow, and they didn't have sidewalks where people could walk on, the, where pedestrians could walk on the sides of the roads. I've seen pictures of those roads in 2002, and that's true. And the Gyeonggi province revamped a lot of their road systems after this incident to prevent things like this from happening again. And I've seen pictures, and also the roads were not straight. The roads were very curvy, so it's very hard to see what was coming around you or what you were coming towards. That happened. So we talked about the road structure. The second thing. The second thing is the after the girls were unintentionally ran over, the soldiers got to the nearest parking lot that they could find, and they ran over and administered aid to these girls, and they were in tears trying to revive these girls back to life. That's how sad they were about that situation. The And then adding on to that, there was another vehicle that was ahead of the specific armored vehicle, a U.S. military vehicle, that was trying to signal for them to stop. But there was faulty communications equipment and communications equipment that was not working, so people could not communicate very effectively. And that, the U.S. military examined that vehicle, and they found faulty communications equipment. Okay, they did. Um, the Okay, we talked about that. Point number two. Okay, point number three. Okay, the third point is, after this incident happened, the U.S. military families compensated the girls' families. They compensated the girls' families, plus the a lot of the U.S. military wives in that area, they organized a um, money, raise money. They organized a fundraising to build a statue for dedicated to those two girls. That happened. And there's photos that prove that. So, those incidents happen. So, let's talk about the trial. Let's talk about why did the United States and the U.S. military take control of the trial. Okay, well, by law of the U.S.-South Korea Forces Agreement, this was a training exercise. Yes, it occurred off U.S. military base, but the U.S.-South Korea Forces Agreement state when these training exercises occur and it involves U.S. military soldiers in a training exercise, the U.S. military has jurisdiction over that. Now, if it's if the soldiers are just out on leave or they're uh, having fun outside the U.S. military bases and it's not a training exercise, it's not business, then that falls under jurisdiction of the South Korean government. So, the U.S. military was just following the law. Now, they could turn it over to the South Koreans, okay? But the reason the U.S. military did not, I firmly believe, is because Kim Dae-jung was president of South Korea at the time. I had nothing against Kim Dae-jung. Um, he pardoned Chun Doo-an and No Tae-woo, and these were two guys that tried to kill him back in the 1980s. Um, Kim Dae-jung still uh, still remained friends for a long time, even, even right when he died. He died. And Kim Dae-jung passed away in 2009. He was a good, God-fearing man, even though I wouldn't vote for him for president. But he remained friends with Donald Gregg. Donald Gregg was the U.S. ambassador to South Korea for a while. And they still remain friends. So, and Kim Dae-jung lived in the United States for two years. He lectured a lot at Harvard University. So I have nothing against him. Um, it's just when he was in office, he gave North Korea a lot of money. Prime example, the first summit that occurred between him and Kim Jong-il cost $26,900,000. He, Kim Dae-jung and the South Korean government paid $26 million. Kim Jong-il only paid $900,000. Okay, that's number one. Okay, number two, there, 
Number two, during that time, some North Korean defectors that were in South Korea were sent back to South Korea. Some were, uh, but then some, many of them were silenced and were either forbidden or constantly encouraged to not speak out against the North Korean government, the current North Korean government. The North Korean defectors in South Korea at the time were treated kind of like criminals, basically. So the U.S. didn't, I believe, did not want to give the trial to Kim Dae-jung because they were not sure what was going to happen to their soldiers when they firmly believed their soldiers were innocent. And they looked at the tank and they found faulty communications equipment. They looked at the tank and they found that. It was faulty communications equipment. That's why they were found not guilty in the trial. So it, it was an unfortunate incident, but these soldiers did not intentionally run over these South Korean middle school girls. Unfortunate incident, but miscommunications between the drivers, what transpired, it was just an accident. There was no intentional homicide, intentional manslaughter, murder. There was no psychopathic behavior involved in this. So, Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless and bye-bye. Bye-bye.